get back into Redox Chemistry. Okay, so um, just a review, you're going to be able to, you're going to be meeting, I can use words, I can write words, <laughs> yikes. Remember that when you're assigning oxidation numbers, you can use a bunch of different materials to help you. You can use your red rocket sheet, you can use your periodic table, like the back side of it. Um, you might also need your pink sheet to help you to know ions. So um, just a little refresher on that. Um, for example, let's say that we have something like um, NiHPO4. This would be like one of the more complicated things that you'd need to do. So we can always know that H is plus one and always that oxygen is minus two. And now if you look at your chart for nickel, if you look at the periodic table, you'll see that there are a couple of options. And so we can't know which one to choose. Also for phosphorus, there are several options. So how do we know where to go from here? The best thing to do is to look to see if you've got a polyatomic ion. If you do, pull that out and make it separate. And then this is where your pink sheet will come in handy. You might not have all of these pre uh, polyatomic ions memorized. And so if you don't, then to look at that for the charge would be helpful. The charge of this friend is two minus. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so if we know that we've got plus one and minus two, and now that we only have like one question mark here, we're going to add all those things up. Equals negative two. So we've got a plus one, plus one, plus P. Minus eight equals minus two. P minus seven equals minus two. P equals plus five. So that's just me going through some more basic algebra a little bit quickly. So now that we know the phosphorus, we can put that back into this compound and we can do the same process again to solve for nickel. So we've got nickel, one hydrogen, one phosphorus, four oxygens. Now this time it needs to add up to zero because there's no charge up here on this compound. So then nickel plus one plus five minus eight equals zero. Nickel, uh, six minus eight minus two, Nickel equals plus two. So that's just a pretty, like really speedy review of what we did last time. You'll need to be able to do that again because we are going to now put um, this information together with chemical equations to see if we can determine um, what's being reduced and what's being oxidized. Okay, so remember that in a redox reaction, you really have two separate processes that have to occur together. The first one is reduction, and the second one is oxidation, although really oxidation has to occur first because you need to have electrons like out there in order for them to be obtained by someone else. So if we use our mnemonic device, Leo-Gosger, that'll help us to remember which is which. What, does, what do these words mean? So remember that LEO stands for lose electrons oxidized. And remember that GER stands for gains electrons reduced. So reduction is a gain of electrons. Oxidation is a loss 
all the last ones. Okay, so now I just want to talk a little bit more about the word reduction. The reason it's given this name is because of what happens to the oxidation number when an element is reduced. So because you're gaining electrons, what is going to happen is that your oxidation number is going to get more negative. And that's what, where the word reduction comes from. Because you're reducing the number, that really means a gain of electrons, but the number itself, the oxidation number, is being reduced. The word oxidation comes from the early times of experimenting with these um, reactions. For the most part, they discovered that um, the substances that were losing electrons all had oxygen in them. And so that's sort of where that word oxidation comes from, because they were oxygen-containing compounds. And that was sort of the pattern that they noticed at first, these old guy scientists. Unfortunately, that was, you know, a very male-dominated area, ladies. We got Marie Curie, and that's like about it from that era. Okay, so let's talk about how we can identify these things in an actual reaction. So I want you to take out your homeworks, if you please. I'm going to use these equations as an example. Let's do the first one. Well, if you used your bed bath or sheet. Okay. Right, I'm just going to copy the equation down. So for all of these equations, you're going to need to identify the oxidation number for every single element excuse me, in every single compound. So that was why the first page of the homework, to give you a chance to practice it. Okay, so let's start here at the beginning. As reactants in the equation for number one, we have two elements that are just by themselves. The oxidation number for elements by themselves should always be zero. zero. It's rule number one on your red rocket sheet. So even though there are two chlorines in the chlorine gas, um, they have to add up to zero. And there's no other way that you can add two things up to equal zero in order for them to be the same number unless they're zero. Okay, so then let's do a sodium chloride. Sodium only has one possible oxidation state, it's plus one. And I know that from looking at the back side of my periodic table. So then that means that chlorine must be... Negative one. Correct. Okay, so this should be easy because it's a review of last time, right? We doing okay? I don't want to lose you right away because <laughs> it'll be a little complicated. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that connects where the elements are the same, but their numbers have changed. So my first one I'm going to draw with the blue. I'm going to see that sodium went from a zero to a plus one. You don't have to write the zero to a plus one if you don't want to. It sometimes helps me to visualize it. Okay, so what's happened here? If this were money, you would go from having zero dollars in your account to having one dollars. And that would be a nice thing, right? But remember that electrons are the opposite of money. So if you have gotten more positive, you've actually lost electrons. So this must mean that this is the oxidation reaction.
Okay. So now there have to be, in all of these reactions, there has to be two of these events because those electrons that were lost by the sodium have to go somewhere. If electrons um, are just like hanging around free in the air or in the environment, that's actually what we call free radicals. Have you heard of that term before? Free radicals are dangerous. Um, have you heard of the word antioxidants yeah. before? Antioxidants are chemicals that absorb electrons that are like free, or those free radicals. And um, their antioxidants are useful because they prevent you from getting sick. Free radicals, those electrons that are just hanging out in the environment, are dangerous because they have so much energy and they can like bombard molecule, other molecules with such a, um, a high velocity that they can like cause disruptions. That's one of the reasons that um, like ultraviolet light from the sun causes skin cancer. That's in its most basic form an example of electrons like going rogue and interfering with your body's DNA to cause mutations to happen. So having electrons just out and about is not a good thing. Okay, so we're gonna to have to find where those electrons went to. So now in a different color, but maybe you just wanna do it in a different place on your paper. However you wanna outline it for yourself is fine with me. I'm going to identify where there is another change in the oxidation numbers. So for chlorine now, we're going from a zero to a minus one. Obviously, this has to be the reduction, right? Because process of elimination. But remember what that word reduction means. It means that your number got more negative. Here, zero got more negative. It became negative one. Okay, so none of this is the answer to this question yet, though, at all. So we haven't actually done any of the work that is going to be graded, but we've got a good start. Okay, so what does it say on your homework? It wants you to identify the oxidized species and the reduced species. It wants you to identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. Okay, so this is gonna be a little bit tricky. oxidized species is the one element not the compound that lost electrons. So to find the oxidized species, we're going to go back and find out which elements oxidation number got more positive. And that's how we're going to find the oxidized species. All right, so who got oxidized. Na. So now process of elimination is going to tell me that the other thing that changed is going to be what I write down for the reduced species, but I learned a thing the other day. There, I made more room for myself. Okay, so now let's see what color should we use? We'll use the pink. The reduced species is always the element that was reduced, that gained electrons. So in other words, that one's oxidation number gets more negative.
Okay, so then in this reaction, who was the reduced species? Chlorine. Notice I didn't write Cl2 because that's not the right answer. So for the species in both cases, you will only write a single element always. All right, so then let's try orange here and let's talk about the oxidizing agent. This is where things get a little bit trickier. The oxidizing agent is the substance that allows something else to be oxidized. So in other words, if you are allowing someone to lose electrons, you have to be there ready to take the electrons. Therefore, the oxidizing agent contains the reduced element. It is always a compound and it is always a reactant. So to find the oxidizing agent, we're going to go back and find who did, who did I just say was reduced? Well, I just said it was chlorine. So now I'm going to go back to my original chemical equation. I'm going to find whatever reactant it was that contains chlorine. So here, the oxidizing agent will be Cl2. The reducing agent is exactly the same as the oxidizing agent, but in the reverse. It is the reactant, so it has to be a full compound, that contains the oxidized species. It is the reactant that contains the oxidized species. So again, if you're the reducing agent, it means that you're around to help somebody else become reduced. If that's the case, you have to be there willing to give up your electrons so that someone else can take them. And so what I'm going to do is find the element, um, I'm going to find my oxidized species, that's sodium, and I'm going to go back and find the reactant. That reactant is just really sodium again. Do not write the stoichiometric coefficients. Can I take a picture? Certainly. Okay, so what I want you to do is for each of these problems on your homework, I want you to make yourself this same little list here and keep it in this same order. Because the repetition of having to think those thoughts in this order will help you to know what is what. Because this is kind of a, it's not hard. But if you're not paying attention, it's easy to let it get away from you. Um, you know, um, Let's see, how many of you are drivers? Okay, okay, so mostly everybody. Um, have you ever been driving and you are like, oh shoot, I went like the way I always go because I was just like on autopilot? Or like you end up someplace and you're like, oh shoot, like how did I get here? I don't remember what happened. Like when your brain is worried about something else, it's easy to forget the task at hand. So this is one of those things where like I, I can't stand silence, so I'm never going to tell you, like, don't be, don't be, like, listening to music when you do this, because, honestly, you can listen to the music, it's fine, but if you're, like, you know, watching your 
What's a, what's our favorite guilty pleasure show to watch? Anybody? Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls. Okay. If we're watching our Gilmore Girls and we are like FaceTiming with somebody and we're like checking our email from Mrs. T because she got really mad with us about something, we're not going to be present to like answering these questions. So while there's nothing difficult about this, like you kind of have to like have a little bit of focus. So like maybe not the Mrs. T angry email, but I'm just using that as an example. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for, so this is right here, this whole business here is the answer for number one. You can't know the answer for this though unless you do all of this other work. I'm going to leave all of this nonsense on the board here. I know it's pretty cluttery and I apologize. That is more cluttery than I normally like, but I think that it'll maybe help us as we do some more examples from our homework. Okay, so work on number two while I am getting ready. Identify your oxidation numbers for all of the compounds in that reaction and see if you can, without me, draw those lines that connect who is changing oxidation numbers. not be fooled by potassium there at the beginning. His oxidation number is not plus one. Neatness is going to be really your friend here when you're doing this. Okay, so for oxidation numbers, I got, going from left to right, 0, plus 1, minus 2, plus 1, minus 2, plus 1, 0. Okay, everybody good on that that's helpful okay so now I have to figure out who changed so I can see right away that potassium is my first thing that changed and then I'm just going to write on here it goes from zero to plus one so is that reduction or oxidation oxidation that is oxidation good so if that's oxidation and I've already thought those thoughts I can write over here what the oxidized species is. Remember, it can only be a single element, so I should just write K. Don't write the stoichiometric coefficients. There's nothing proper about that. Um, I mean, it does help if you write down a chemical equation that's balanced, though. Yikes. Okay, so now I'm looking and I'm looking and I see something a little weird. I see two hydrogens on the product side of my reaction. And I think, oh shit, what is this about? But I'm not worried about all of the people whose oxidation numbers don't change. I'm only worried about the ones that do. So I'm going to draw my little connecting line here from the hydrogen at plus one to the hydrogen that is zero. So now I'm going from plus one to zero. So it's good that we did oxidation already because this can be a little bit of a, a, a mind, like a mental, like something that messes us up. You're starting with a positive number and it, you're getting zero. There's like nothing negative about any of this. You have to think about which one gets more negative. So it's gone from plus one to zero. That's getting more negative. That's the reduction. 
So then when I'm writing my reduced species, I should just write H. Okay, so let's talk about the oxidizing agent. The oxidizing agent contains the reduced element. So again, I have to find my reduced element. I have to find the reactant that contains the reduced element. That's this thing here. So that's my oxidizing agent. And then I will do the same thing for the reducing agent. I need to find the oxidized species and the reactant that corresponds to it. In this case, it is K. You see the pattern. Look at your answer in your little, like this little table in part, in for question number one. And look at your answer here for question number two. What do you notice about how you've been writing the things? Liz? The inside two things have the common, they like have a common letter, right? They have a common element. The outside two things also have the common element. That's, I did this deliberately so that you would see the pattern. The oxidized species and the reducing agent, they have to be related to each other because that's the definition of these words. So if you always set your table up like this, knowing that these things have to be in common, will help you to make sure that you are thinking things through properly and that whatever juicy, salacious stuff has happened on your Gilmore Girls, you haven't accidentally done something goofy on your homework. The trouble with this kind of work is if you don't get the answer right, it's just wrong. Like there's not really much because it's like, you know, either or kind of a thing. It's kind of like true false. There's not really much room then for like partial credit. So I don't say that to scare you. Like I totally scared um, everybody in the leadership class. Matthew was there. Matthew was there. I, I, I like scared everybody. This is gonna be awful. It's gonna be horrible. Was it that bad? Did you do, you did the reading? I'm sure you did. Was it that bad? No, no it really wasn't. Okay, so let's do number three, and then I'll give you a brain break. All right, so work on assigning those oxidation numbers. Ooh, this is a little bit more meaty. There's, got, there's more stuff going on here. I'm going to run out of space. take a little bit longer because you've got some more things than you did before.
Okay, so from left to right, I got zero plus one plus five minus two. Plus two plus five minus two plus four minus two plus one minus two. Is that okay? Okay, good. All right, so I see that my first friend that changed numbers is the zero, two, plus two. That's my friend Zinc. And then who else changes? Logan? Nitrogen. Nitrogen. And that goes from plus five to plus four. So here we have a situation where there is nothing negative about any of the numbers here. You have to think about which one gets more negative. So this is going from plus five to plus four. That's getting more negative. That is the reduced. That makes N my reduced species. Remember those first two lines of your little chart for your answer are going to always just be one element. If you've got more than one capital letter, that's not one element. That means that my friend Zinc must be the oxidized species, and that's true because he got more positive, which means that he lost electrons. Okay, so then the reducing agent um, containing the oxidized species, oxidized species reducing agent is just Zinc. Sometimes they'll be identical. And that's if you have those like single elements. What is the oxidizing agent? HNO3. Don't write the stoichiometric coefficients. All right, how do we feel about this? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs medium? There's nothing really hard about it. You just kind of have to pay attention to what you're doing. You have the whole rest of class to take a brain break or half an hour to finish up this homework if you want. You should you could be you could finish it if you wanted. It is due at the start of class on Tuesday. Um, next week we have a Tuesday and Thursday class. On Tuesday we will learn about voltaic cells and then on Thursday we will do a voltaic cell lab. So you'll actually be able to see how much energy, or electricity rather, is transferred between metals when they're in a redox reaction. It, it, it's, it's kind of a fun lab. Can I shock both of them? What? Is there like the ability to shock people? No. No, you, you don't.